All right, this is my family. This is my 13-year-old son, Ryan, and my wife, Debbie. They are rock stars. We have conquered so many challenges together. I believe it's my duty to help other people change the way they think and process information. First and foremost, we have to take our problems or struggles seriously. We often downplay our struggles and almost be embarrassed that we have them at all. It isn't until you meet a guy like Chris Koch here He was born without arms or legs, and he's competing in his sixth marathon. If you notice in this picture, the extreme adaptability that human beings have when they decide to. So I want to share two of my challenges with you. This is a test of my hearing. And as you can see, both in left and right ears, I lack the ability to pick up frequencies where human speech is located. It made it incredibly difficult to participate in normal social settings. I found myself missing words and and trying to keep in conversations. Now, my second challenge is my memory. I don't have the ability to process short-term memory, so my brain often races beyond the information to see what problem I'm supposed to be working on, and by the time that I figured it out, the details have faded. So this is my slide to kind of decompress here, and I'm going to explain something. In the bottom right-hand corner of these slides is a reminder to myself. Because I can't remember, I package whole paragraphs of words, and and I compress it down into an icon. Now, my subconscious knows what I'm going to say, but I have to help it come up with the words. Now, this speech really wasn't written. It was more engineered, where these icons are intended to get me to say things. So over a decade ago, I lost my hearing. Now, despite trying hearing aids, I couldn't get used to them. They destroyed my equilibrium, and it made it sound like people were talking underwater. So I taught myself to read lips. I would stand in front of the mirror, and I would watch my lip movements. And when if I was in a quiet room I would, with another person, I would watch their lip movements as they they said words. My brain started connecting the mouth moving and the lips moving for the probable words that were being said. Now, as you can imagine, this made it difficult in social settings to keep up with people. And I was too proud or ashamed to just say that I had a hearing deficit. Because I know that if I did that, everybody would talk at me so loud that it would make it totally uncomfortable and they'd expose the fact that my hearing was broken. Now, I'm a radio talk show host, and it made it difficult to take callers from our listeners. It's because I couldn't read their lips, and I had to juice the head vote volume up, and I'd still only catch over third or fourth word. But then, three months ago, technology caught up with me. I have hearing aids, and I can hear again. It came real, really real when I got on the radio, and I noticed I was talking to a caller. I was engaging in every word. And I noticed, I looked down, and the volume was on four instead of ten. Now, it took a physical tool that I stuck in my ear in order to have the same access to information that all of you do. But just because that I am forgetful now, I don't have to stay that way. Now, bonus, I can still read lips. So when I'm watching a football game... I can see the players and coaches talking, so I got a lot more insight about what's going on than all of you do. All right, my second is my memory. We'll go into that. Now, I carry around this thing in my pocket, this crutch, right? It knows what I'm going to do later today. It knows my schedule. It knows my contacts. And I'm only productive probably because it exists, because, I, I mean, I'm thankful that it's there, but I have the wiring for memory and I should be able to use it if I want to. Now, if any of you came down here and introduced yourself to me, I would hear your name, but I would certainly forget it. Now, I was at a social event with one of my mentors, and I watched someone introduce themselves to him. And he paused for a minute, and then repeated their name back to them. Later on, I asked him about it, and he said that he makes a visual association. So, 
if someone came up to him that name was Tom and they were wearing this blue tie, his brain would call them Blue Tie Tom. Now, this visual association, he said even later on, no matter what, even if the person was wearing a different tie, his brain would remember them as Blue Tie Tom. Now, I got interested in this, and I wanted to see if there were any more memory strategies that I could start to implement. And I came across one called the LOCI method. Now, the LOCI method uses visual associations like Blue Tie Tom, and it combines them with spatial memorization. So now, if you're, uh, you know, if I close my eyes, I can very specifically see details about the house I grew up in. If I close my eyes, I can actually probably walk through it in total darkness if I had to. I could see the rooms and things that were in those rooms. Well, that's the spatial memory system of the brain that you're calling on there. Th this right here is called a memory palace. Now, this LOCI method, using spatial memory, you take items and you lodge them in different places around this memory palace. So here's my memory palace here. You have the foyer, you have the living room, you have the dining room, and you have the kitchen. Now in, these, in all of these rooms, there are diff different objects that I know. So there's a coffee table and a couch and a dining room table. Now the purpose of it is that you, the, the objects that you have are pretty important because you're going to take things that you want to remember and tie them to things you already know. So in the physical world, if I wanted to remember to take the trash out, I might take a box of trash bags and set it in front of the doorway. And then when I wake up in the morning, I walk to the door and I see that trash bag and right away it's triggered and I remember that I wanted to take the trash out. Now, let me show you how this works. So this here is a parking space that I'd like to remember until I get up to the kiosk so I could pay at the kiosk and then later at the end of the night so I could find my car. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my memory palace and I'm going to take this oversized flip calendar and I'm going to turn it to January. And on January, this, there's this snowy pine tree scene. I'm going to take a thick red marker and I'm going to circle January 28th. And then I'm going to take a staple gun. I'm going to staple it all in all four corners. Now, the more outlandish you are with your memory castle, the more likely it is that you'll be able to recall the information later. So here's a memory game that I used to play with my son. We would take an expired credit card out of the desk. We would try to see how fast we could memorize the numbers. Now the irony is not lost on me that the can't remember anything guys teaching you a memory tactic. I'll give you. So we're going to do this one together. And so the goal is I'm going to take this 16 digit number which is really difficult for most people to memorize. And I'm going to break it down into eight two-digit numbers. So I'm simplifying. I'm taking a complicated thing and I'm making it a little bit simpler. And then I'm going to see if I can figure out if there are any objects or items or something memorable that I can connect with any of these numbers. Now I have a whole, because I do this with everything, I have a whole list of numbers that are, I can easily access. And so when I see like a 7 and a 13 and a 21 and a 65, right, I can go to those items and those are my go-to. So if I need to stack these and put these in my memory palace, perfect access. So let's do this one together. 36, I was a NASCAR fan, so I'm going to associate right away with a 36 M&M. So M&M's, nice, nice uh, memorable thing. We got 24. I was a baseball fan, Ricky Henderson, my favorite player growing up. We got a poster of Ricky Henderson stealing second base. The next number, 04. 04, a little bit difficult. We don't usually put a single digit, a numeral zero, in front of items, but I'm going to go with the 2004 Summer Olympic Games in Athens, Greece. So I'm going to go with the Greek goddess statue, and that's going to bring me back to 04. Back to the credit card, 17. Back to NASCAR. We got the DeWalt uh, NASCAR stock car. That's an easy one. Now, 84. This is the year that Ghostbusters came out. So I'm going with Stay Puffed. Next one, 69. All right, let's go with uh, Brian Adams and the summer of 69. See, that was an easy one. And the next one, 26. Now, 26, I do lots of payroll. I love numbers. I love accounting. So the first thing I thought of is there are 26 calendar weeks in a year, in a half of a year, right? And so I'm going to go with a big old calendar thing, torn in half, that equals 26 to me. And the last one is 65, easy one. That's the 
year, that's the age that we all hope to retire. So I'm going to go with this little scene of a couple people on a beach retired with a sunset. Now, I took very complicated thing, a long 60-digit number, and now I have my eight different items that are really easy for me to remember now. So now all I have to do is I have to take my numbers, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to forget my numbers for a minute. I'm going to take my items, and I'm going to place them around my memory palace. So I'm going to go back into my uh, entryway here, and I'm going to put a bowl of M&Ms right in the entryway, a candy dish full of M&Ms. And I'm going to take my poster for Ricky Henderson and put it on the wall. Now, the Greek goddess statue is next, so I'm going to put a Greek goddess statue on a pedestal. My entryway is done. So now I'm going to walk into the living room. Right here on the floor, I'm going to put my DeWalt drill right there on the floor. I'm going to walk over to the couch and stay puff marshmallow man sitting on the couch. Now, 69. Now we got Brian Adams. We're going to throw him on the coffee table. Now I'm going to go into the dining room. And in the dining room, I'm going to put my poster of half of a calendar year, 26. I'm going to put it right on the wall. And then I got Grandpa sitting at the dining room table for the 65. Now, I was able to break these items, or this massive number, 16 digits, down to 8 digits. Take those 8 digits and translate them into items. Take those items and spread them out in my memory palace. Now, if I want to recall any of that information, all I do is wander into the three separate rooms that my items are there. I see those items, and I translate them back to their numbers. So that's a, simpl a simplifying way to take a, a complicated number and put it into memory. Now, it's time for us to find our car again. Does everybody remember the parking spot number? So here, wait, before you say, before you say I'm going to walk into the entryway. And in the entryway, there's a candy dish of M&Ms. There's Ricky Henderson poster, recalling all of this. The Greek goddess statue. There's a calendar there. And on the calendar is pine trees covered in snow. It's opened to a very specific month and day. It's January. And there's a date that's circled, dark red marker. And on that dark red marker is the 28th. Translate January 28th back to, back to my, uh, my car, and now I have my memory space. Now, I went from a guy that could not hear and could not remember, and I figured out a way that I can hear everything now, and I can definitely remember anything I cho choose to remember. I'm going to give you the secret here. The secret is don't be ashamed. It's very easy for me to be, make excuses and be ashamed and, and not want to tackle my struggles because there's definitely people that are worse off than me. But rather than minimizing those things, you've got to take them serious and not be ashamed. The second is focus your energy on the things that you can control. If you put your focus on all of the things you control and stop being distracted by the things that are outside of your control, you can conquer this. And lastly, unlock the potential in the greatest tool you'll ever own, your mind. Thank you.